All right. Good evening, everybody. Guys, it's a duckling reveal. Let's yeah, I know, right? I'm super excited to be here as well. Thank you, Guardian Marcus, for uh, pointing out that I'm here. Sir Linkalot's going to be doing the run. I'm hanging out with Jat2980. Jat, what you up to today? Not too much. I was uh, spending a bit of the afternoon doing some VOD reviews of some other, other like fantastic work that the Ducks are doing, and I'm super pumped to be here tonight to reveal a new flag set. Yeah, I'm super pumped as well. Couldn't be here last week, but I'm super excited to be here this week. We're in week two of the Duckling Boot Camp. That means we've got six more weeks before the official Duckling Derby starts up. And of course, that is all about teaching new players how to play the game because we're about to go over these flags right now. And let me tell you something, if you've, if you've never played a randomizer or if you're just now getting into it that is a lot of buttons to click i mean you can see there's a lot going on here so we're going to try to break it all down for you super quick before we run into sir link lot's run um yeah i mean let's 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 do it so week two this is kind of all about what can happen if you've got just everything you need and shops all right so first things first you'll notice under the shops and uh, spells and RNG and all that jazz, you got your shops um, are gonna be completely random. You've got random weapons and armor, and you also have caster and elite gear. And that's huge because that means you can pick up a Zeus gauntlet. You can pick up a black shirt. You can pick up a Moss Immune. You could buy a Moss Immune. Like there could be one in Canaria for like, I don't know, 5,000 bucks or something. And then at that point, all you need to do is get a bunch of money and you can just start massaging everything. So uh, it's a pretty awesome little flag that we have going on there. Um, we're not gonna really talk too much about the things that aren't turned on, but we will talk about magic levels. That just basically means Nuke can land at level one, Cure four, you know, all the good spells can land early, all the bad spells can land later. Um, you'll keep the permission of your red mage. So let's say for instance, in the original game, your red mage could only learn slots one and two, one and three of uh, level one white magic. That's what they'll be able to learn there. So as long as life two lands at slot one or three, then that red mage can still learn that spell. All right, uh, we're gonna go on ahead and move on from there. And uh, the RNG table on the far right, that just means that in the vanilla game, there was always a certain amount of steps between each encounter. Now we've just randomized it. So you've still got your table of 256 steps. Those six to eight encounters are just gonna be random as opposed to what they were in the original game. Yeah. So uh, if we keep it moving, what do we got here? We got enemies. Oh my gosh, the screen. Let me tell you something. <laughs> uh, so yeah, shuffled unrunnable formations. So normally there are certain formations that are always gonna be unrunnable, right? Uh, Warmack is one, uh, Blue Dragon, Zombie Ds, those things. They're always gonna be unrunnable. That just gets shuffled around. So you may run into a pack of imps and you can't run away from them. That's just what's gonna happen. Uh, the other crazy unran uh, unrunnable formations um, could happen, but that's basically what that means is that it just shuffles into different things. Uh, shuffle surprise bonus. So shadows, you know, they always ambush. You can't get away from them. You go into Marsh Cave, they're always ambushing you. Well, now other things will ambush you. So it just kind of does that, that similar thing as well. And you'll be able to ambush different uh, encounters than you normally would be able to. <laughs> uh, enemies, so you got scripts, you got skills and spells, and you have, oh my gosh, why can't I read this? Status, status attacks. attacks. Yeah. Thank you. It's a hot mess on my screen. So again, that just means all enemies are going to be completely random. Imps could throw nukes at you. Imps can have death touch. You know, man cats may not be throwing fire twos and slows at you. They may decide to just attack you. Sorcerers, they're not the scariest thing in the world anymore because they may not have death touch and trance. They'll have other random things or they may just attack you for four hits, four damage, and then that's it. So yeah. It just basically means all enemies are gonna be completely random as far as what they do as far as attacks, skills, spells, and then of course their status attacks. And then lastly, the only other thing we have turned on here is our shuffled 
spike tile. So everyone knows that the eyeball, it lives in ice cave. It's right in front of the floater, right? Now you get there, you, you go, you're in ice incentive. You touch it and all of a sudden, hey, that's not an eyeball anymore. It's like a bunch of gargoyles or some wizards or whatever, or you're in Marsh Cave and no longer wizards down there. It's an agam or or a zombie D. That's, that's essentially what that means. If we had used random formations, then that would make things completely different, but it takes all your vanilla tiles and it just moves them around. It shuffles them up a little bit. I did want to highlight one thing about the enemy. Um spells and status touches something i've been talking about with some of the other ducklings recently has been the impact this has on your strategy and what this fundamentally does is makes enemies that are scary in the vanilla game especially the ones who are spellcasters become exp pinatas for the most part meanwhile enemies that are less scary in the vanilla game like imps can become a lot more terrifying so basically what you have to consider here for enemy difficulties that more difficult enemies in the vanilla game are going to be a little bit easier and easier enemies in the vanilla game like spiders could become very dangerous so just something to keep in mind yeah, exactly that. It, and, and it's why people you'll see people won't be so scared to grind eyes because, you know, in vanilla eyes typically uh, start off with either quad X or glance. And glance is a spell that'll turn you to stone and you basically need a ribbon. So they're kind of like an enemy you really don't want to try to grind in the early game without ribbons. And you're not going to go back to ice cave and do it once you finally get a ribbon. But then once you randomized all that stuff, then eyes typically just attack, and they're, like he said, uh, EXP pinatas. Rush. All right. Uh, so, item shuffle. What this means here, we got treasures, just treasures turned on. That is every single treasure in the game. You got your one opal bracelet, you got your, you know, your, your ice armor, your flame shield your defense sword, you know, all the things that normally live in boxes in the game, they get taken out of those boxes and then they get put back into random new boxes. So Masa is not going to be hanging out down in that bottom right hand corner of sky, whatever, right? It's going to be, it could potentially be in Topher or in regular Tofu. Like you, it could be the first box you pick up. So it just basically means to, that you moved everything out of a box and put it into new boxes. Yeah. And um, so under here, you got main NPC items. Uh, that's just stuff that you get from like King Sarah, uh, Bicky, uh, Robot, as you can see there. It, it has everything listed there. Bridge, loot, ship, rod, canoe, all that stuff will be pulled out of them and moved on to somebody else. Uh, fetch quest rewards, same deal. Herb may not turn into the uh, crystal. Crystal may not turn into the key. TNT is definitely not going to turn into the canal adamant you're not going to get the x scout from that you'll get another key item uh we do have a free bridge uh generally that's turned on it's turned on pretty much all the time mainly because it's the only key item that is always loose so there's really no reason not to have free bridge because you're going to get the bridge in temple of fiends or somewhere really early on in the game so we just always have it turned on for free So the first major difference here from this flag set compared to the week one one, and I've linked a little bit above the chat, but I'll recopy it of a playlist to all the duckling boot camps, or the first one in this case, um, is that we actually have turned off, we have no loose items. We have the same location count as item count, which means that every single incentive location is going to have one of our key items here. Now, not all of them are required to win the game. For example, you can win without the tail, you may be able to win without the ruby, for example, but um, in most cases, you're gonna have to go to all of these locations in order to win. And that is a big difference here. The other big difference, there are no items that you need to win in random boxes throughout the overworld. You know every single location of the key items, and that uh, changes quite a bit from this week to the last one. And uh, Greg Lee and I will be kind of going into how that affects routing and all that stuff once Sir Link a lot gets going. Yeah, so exactly as Jet said, you got no loose items, which means you technically don't have to open up any boxes except for incentive boxes. And then like he said, you may not need the tail. I mean, you may be able to miss out on ordeals that could potentially have the tail or the canal could be somewhere that, the canal could potentially be in marsh, but then you could have gotten the canoe earlier and the floater could be an ice cave. So you may not even need the canal either. 
So there, there's could be a couple of things you can miss, but since we don't have like a ton of items in the incentive pool as well, I can imagine we'll probably need most of the items uh, that are in the incentive locations. So let's go through those incentive locations. Again, main NPCs, like I said before, King, Sarah, Bicky, Robot, Shop Item, right? Those particular places. Just guys, you don't have to do anything with, you just talk to them and they give you stuff, right? Fetch quest NPCs, that's where you take a thing, like the crown to Astos, like the herb to the prince, like the crystal to Matoya, and they'll give you something else. Bottle to the fairy, slab to the Lapanish people, and they'll give you something that will be a key item. All right, and then you have all our incentive locations outside of those NPCs. Ice cave, that's the floater, uh, floater box. You got ordeals, that's the tail box. You've got Marsh Cave, that's the crown box. Everybody knows that box. Titan's Trove, that is a relatively new location, and by relatively new, I mean, it's been around for about a year now, but maybe you're new and you don't know that it exists, and there isn't a key item that used to exist in that box, but this is something we decided to add into the incentive pool. It is the far left chest in Titan's room. And lastly, we've got Canary Elect, which is, of course, the TNT box. All right. And then, of course, um, all the items that are incentivized is right up there. You can read them there. Adamant, bottle, canal, canoe, chime, crown, crystal, cube, floater, herb, key, loot, oxyl, rod, rube, B, ship, slab, tail, and TNT. Um, uh, the main progression items, of course, the things that you need in order to beat the game. Other items are things you don't need to beat the game, like the Adamant, the TNT, the Ruby, stuff like that. Uh, and then, of course, you've got, you can actually put the floater, the canoe, ship, canal, and tail into the incentive pool, which you have those different checkboxes there. All right. So we keep it moving. Don't need to talk about gold because we're not doing Chaos Rush. We don't have Treasure Hunt on and we don't have any alternative bosses or short and Topher and all that nonsense, all right? Um, entrance Shuffle, we're not worrying about that right now. So you don't have to get worry anything about that. You got vanilla entrances. You got vanilla floors and towns. It's the game you know, right? We're not trying to get too crazy over here. All right, so progression. Uh, we have early open progression. What that means is that you can go to Dwarf Cave from Canaria based on the picture that you see there. You just go to the west there. There's like a little opening in the mountain range and you can get to Dwarf Cave that way. And the only other thing that is on from there is there is a break in the river system between Ice Cave and Volcano. That is the only thing that means. So there's, those are the two map edits that are going on right now is being able to go to Dwarf Cave from Canaria and that break in the river system between Ice Cave and Volcano. Um, and then we got the early king item on. So you can talk to the king right away if you want to. Most people won't. Uh, there's literally like, <laughs> like there's, there is a very specific flag set in which you would ever speak to the king before trying to kill Garland first. Um, but this is not one of them, but you can, you can still do it. I just don't see that happening. Sarda item is turned on, which means you don't have to kill the vampire in order to get the Sarda item. Sage item is turned on, which means you don't have to kill Lich to get the Sage item. And early ordeals is turned on, which means I don't need the crown to go into ordeals. All right, and lastly, isolated map edits. Man, we've got castle ordeal pillars. They are shuffled. That means you know how you always had to go into the southern, southern, the southernmost pillar. Uh, you don't have to do that anymore because I mean they're going to be shuffled now. So it's all randomized. You'd never know. You could have to be the unfortunate soul that has to go into that fourth pillar way on the far west side of that four pillar room. Um, you can get warped back a million times and just keep choosing wrong. Uh, but yeah, that's what that basically means is that the pillars are shuffled. Uh, Titan's Trove means that we've moved the Titan from where he normally lives 
kind of to the middle of the um, the room. That way, if you get the airship early, you can't just go in through the back door and check all those treasure chests. You need the ruby in order to get those four treasure chests. And Lafanish Hospitality gives us an inn and a clinic in Lafane. Now, Jack, I'm going to let you talk about this since this is kind of a new thing. I know this was something that Cheesinator wanted where because we have the dual sliders, now we have mm -hmm. where I guess the center point is. Yeah, that's correct. So, um, yeah, shout outs to our dev. They just put devs. They just put out a fantastic update uh, just today. You know, this is fresh off the press, um, which adds a ton of new features. Uh, a lot of them are not going to be relevant to this seed, but one of them, which is, is that they've added in a calculation to show at what percentage half the enemies are going to have more than that and half the enemies are going to have less, less than that. And that's what this 109% is. So half of the enemies are going to roll higher than 109% for their stats, and half of the enemies are going to low, roll lower than 109% for each of their stats. Now, the way stat randomization works, it's not like an enemy who rolls 150% is going to have 150% HP, 150% attack, etc, etc. Each stat rolls independently, but overall in the entire pool, half are going to be above 109, and half are going to be below 109. Oh, sorry, for bosses in this case, is what I've been talking about. Um, this, compared to last week, has increased the difficulty just a little bit. We've gone from a bottom of 50% up to 80%, so everything's going to be hitting just a little bit harder. Bosses aren't going to have, you know, that really, really minimum roll HP. But to compensate, you're at, we've actually increased the experience as well. So you should be getting even more experience from fewer fights, as well as more gold. And that's quite important, as you're going to be getting a lot of... You're going to need a lot of money to buy that elite gear in the shops. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, price prices, as you can see there, 30% to 330%. He's already talked about enemy stats and boss stats. As you can see, there is a button for separate HP scaling, which we don't have turned on. So stats and HP scaling will land in that in that range there. Uh, EXP is pretty good, right? That's uh, 2.8 times plus the 300 for gold per enemy so that's pretty huge it's not it's it's close to black belt huge but we're gonna get there here in just a second uh and yeah. then we're doing a five percent per key item so every item that you get where it gives you that kind of fanfare uh sound um you know key loot bridge anything that just makes that jingle uh will give you an extra five percent of experience points all right um since we have a free bridge we're already starting with an extra five percent so that's pretty awesome all right overruled and dungeon encounter rate you'll notice that we got a 0.6 and a 0.7 that just means that they are the same uh because in the original game the overworld encounter rate is 10 encounters per 256 steps uh and the dungeon encounter rate is eight per 256 steps so as you can see we've just done the math to where it'll even out the overall encounter rate will always be six encounters per 256 steps and the dungeon encounter rate will be the same at six per 256 steps and hopefully we can get into that a little bit mm -hmm. as the game goes because it is kind of important to have the or at least get an idea of what the what your um encounter map looks like where your six encounters are going to be especially when you're going through the final dungeon or when you're going through c and you know that scary things are happening in certain floors mm -hmm. um but but hopefully we can get into that here in a little bit um you got your blurst weapons and armor that's blessings and cursed um it is negative three to seven plus seven pluses that means yay that's great negatives that means boo no good right basically it just means that uh it's going to be less good than it was in vanilla and pluses mean it's going to be better than it was in vanilla um body armor is going to be a plus two to absorb and a negative or, or sorry yeah a negative two to evasion penalty and then anything else will get you a plus one and a negative one to those things. Um, as far as uh, the weapons are concerned, you may need to help me out on this because they keep changing it up on me. It's, yeah, it's right there. 
Uh, damage will go up per two per modifier. Uh, the hit will go up by three per modifier, and the crit rate will also be uh, three per modifier. Which is 1.5%. That's very confusing, I understand. But if you think about it as crit going up by 1.5% per modifier, that's going to be the, the number that you should keep in your head. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, this is brand new this week. So this is definitely something that we're going to emphasize as well. But it really does change up kind of the calculations about which weapons are better or worse, especially in the mid game. So, you know, keep an eye out for those pluses and minuses. And we'll, uh, Sir Lancelot and uh, Gregly and I will explain it as we get through the seed. Yeah, it's kind of hard to explain it now. Mm -hmm. All I can say for sure is if you're in a shop and you see a cap plus seven, you are picking that thing up. Yep. In the original game, you would look at cap and go, nah, I'm not gonna waste my time buying that. But you see a cap plus six, cap plus five, cap plus seven, that's like, you know, Eight seven absorb. absorbed. That, yeah, <laughs> that, 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 that's massive. It's a, it's, a, it's a big, big difference. And Guardian Marcus has already seen what we're all seeing. Guys, I know it's crazy. He got Gregory here talking about things. This is our party composition, as you may notice. All the check marks are there except for the black belt, and there is a reason for it. Because we have all that elite gear in the shops, because we have the blur scene all the way up to seven and minus three, we really wanted to kind of focus on melee, like mm -hmm. uh, item, or, or sorry, weapon and armor kind of management there, and knowing what you can get in shops and stuff like that. So, it felt like the black belt, you're not going to learn anything using a black belt in this particular flag set. Yeah, I wanted to make, like, I wanted to really put the uh, the EXP up high enough so you could get enough gold, like the plus, so you could get enough gold. But in doing so, I didn't want it so that you could just grind a black belt to 32 and never buy anything from a shop. So black belts, unfortunately, had to be banned. But if you're a big fan of black belts, tune in again next week. Uh, you will be very, very, very happy with what you see. Yeah, exactly. It just wouldn't. Like it's it just wouldn't make any sense to have a black belt in in this particular uh, this particular flag set. You'll be fine. You'll be able to get enough money to buy any sort of gear that you need. It's it's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. You may not even have to open any boxes. Just take battles, buy stuff. You could get. Speaking right. of uh, putting the focus on weapons, this is another major change that we've added to the randomizer in the last few months. But and this is the first time that we've used it actually in a duckling flag set ever. So um, this is the max magic charges. Um, flag set. And what this does is instead of you having a maximum of nine charges for your three regular mages and four charges for your uh, ninja and knight, uh, instead the red mage is going to be capped at four, white and black mage at six, and your knight and your ninja at two. And the big difference this is going to make is that you're not just going to be able to rely on like casting nuke, for example, to get through all the fiends. Um, and once again, this change was made so that way people had to focus a little bit more on those weapons and really make sure that they're equipping their classes properly, getting the gear they need, so that way they can swing through this Temple of Fiends Revisited, as just casting nuke 27 times isn't going to cut it here. Um, outside of that, it's definitely a nerf to the Red Mage, but keep in mind, the Red Mage is the best melee mage, so you can equip the Red Mage with a Vorpal plus 5, and that Red Mage is going to do some serious work. Um, but you know, a little bit less reliable healing, can't cast life quite as many times. So keep your eyes out on that and don't be surprised when, you know, your red mage is level 16 and still only has four level one spell casts. Um, this is also something of note for what we're going to be going through, which is class selection, like, you know, what party you want to look at. Um, red mages are slightly worse than usual. That being said, red mages is generally considered the best class in Final Fantasy Randomizer. So a little bit worse than usual, still pretty good. <laughs> um, continuing forward, uh, into conveniences. The only thing of note here that I want to point out is that we have NPC guillotine on, um, and that's going to let you so that you can like talk to bats to remove them if you're getting blocked by them. Um, so definitely keep in mind that, that if that happens, you can just talk to the bat and remove them. Also, a lot of annoying villagers, you can do the same thing for. Uh, uh, did, did you guys have uh, auto sort inventory on last week? I'm assuming yes. you guys talked about that a little bit. Yeah, auto sort inventory as well as on, which always is going to move heal pots to the first slot. So uh, this is a, this is going to be on for the entirety of the Duckling Derby as well as all the Duckling Weekly. So you can definitely get used to this. Um, if you don't like it, you can re um, revoke it at the bottom. But I would recommend keeping it on as uh, this is a flag that we've included for a multitude of reasons. But one of the big ones is we want to increase the accessibility of Final Fantasy Randomizer so everyone can play. 
Um, and this is just a way so that, you know, how fast you can menu heal pots doesn't dictate whether or not you within seed. Yeah. Um, and, and I want to really point out real quick that for all you naysayers, for all the older people that are probably watching this right now, or not older people, I guess people that have been around the community a long time, uh, that may look at auto sword as like, a, oh, it's just the worst thing you could ever imagine. If we scroll down to experimental here, uh, we have the resend auto sort. So it's one of those things you don't have to use if you don't want to use it. Yeah, so uh, resend auto or renounce, sorry, renounce auto sort under f uh, fun percent flags there. So uh, it's, it's kind of, again, like, like Jat said, I'm thinking that we're going to try to use auto sort in it, we're going to kind of have it on all the time as yeah. far as accessibility is concerned for pretty much everybody. Yeah. And then for those people that are used to not having it on, you can always just turn it off Absolutely. and it won't and it won't affect the flags at all. So I think we did pretty good there as far as timing is concerned. It looked like it took us about 25 minutes or so to get through that. So if we want to go on ahead real quick and just roll up a seed, um, if you've never seen the website before, you just scroll to the top here. You can just, well, never mind. You can just scroll to the top and hit the um, uh, the button next to where the seed is located. And then there's a big old button that says generate next to it. And then once you click that generate button, it'll give you a seed. It'll give you a new, a whole new ROM. You throw that ROM into whatever emulator or your hardware that you are using. And then blamity blam, it is time to play some Final Fantasy. I did want to quickly point out, because we've had a bunch of questions in chat, uh, I would recommend uh, BizHawk as an emulator for this if you're just getting started. Um, it's really, really good. It works with co-op. But if you use another one, those should all work as well. But if you've never started before, that would be right, my recommendation. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so because we can't have the uh, fighter, uh, or I'm sorry, because we can't have the black belt, uh, you know, that leaves you two melee options. Uh, typically in Final Fantasy Randomizer, at least the way that we've been playing over the last couple of years, is you, you know, you generally will bring a melee and then you'll generally bring, you know, mages. Uh, because in the early game, you can have your mages kind of clear things, uh, get through kind of the earlier battles. And then, of course, having more black mages, you can guarantee that you get things like fast temper. Uh, you know, kind of those spells, especially if they roll into the upper levels, mm -hmm. you, you make sure that you have fast and temper, which is why you'll see black mages. Another reason why I imagine that um, Sir Linkalot is bringing two black mages is because of the run chance. Uh, black mages have a better run chance than pretty much all the other mages, and it's the highest one aside from the thief at least in the early game. So if you bring two of them along, generally, if you need to get away from a battle, it won't take you more than two rounds of combat to get away from a battle. Um, the white mage, of course, is there because again, we know that the red mages only have the four charges and he's guaranteeing that he can get things like life, life two, exit, uh, you know, invis two or ruse. Um, and then of course the fighter is the best melee class in the game by far. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can equip everything. You know you're going to get Massa. You know you're going to be able to... Well, we don't know you're going to get no, Massa. But, no but guaranteed Massa here. There is no guaranteed Massa. You're right. It could show up in shops, but more than likely, you, you're either going to find it in shops or you're going to find something equally good in shops. Mm -hmm. um, and it has better HP growth. It has better strength. It's just overall a better class to bring into Topher at a lower level versus bringing a Thief along, which is... Thief is great, because of the uh, the thief buffs that we have going on, but you typically have to go into tow for a little bit higher level so that you have more than like 400 HP. Um, quick question in chat. Um, how do you swap the sprites for this character? So that's a little bit of a complicated question. It's not directly supported through here. You have to uh, modify the ROM. If you want some more information, check out our Discord and join the hashtag uh, development, or sorry, uh, creative uh, channel, and you'll be able to get more information about it there. I did want to quickly, uh, one, shout out uh, Dark Moon tonight for doing our fantastic restream, and two, welcome our runner to the booth, uh, Sir Linkalot. Um, Sir Linkalot, Greatly Puff just gave a great explanation of some of the strengths and weaknesses of the various classes and like what we're looking at here. Can you give a little bit of a reason, like, 
What was in your head when you selected this party? Uh, my main reason was because the Red Mage has so few spell charges, the, the Red Mage's strength to me is the versatility. Um, with the limited spell charges, you lose that versatility, especially if, you know, if you only get one major spell per level, it's not that bad. But if you start getting two to three spells on the same level, that Red Mage <laughs> loses a lot of that strength immediately, only having four charges. Um, that's the main reason I'm going for like double black mage and white mage is just mostly the spell charges because usually I like bringing at least one red mage if not two in my comps but yeah uh, that limited spell charge is kind of pushing me away from it I, I think a fighter rainbow would be a quite a safe comp position here as well I've met I mentioned a couple other like kind of go fast comps in chat but a fighter rainbow the red mage is kind of like a second melee option who also could get some really good spell casts uh, the one problem with fighter rainbow is it just has a little bit of difficulty with running so mm -hmm just something to consider um and running will be relatively important here as we're not going to be opening all the boxes in the world um yeah so gregly anything you want to say before we kick this off no i was just thinking that like any other kind of off the wall comps i mean you could always run like a thief bunch of red mages but mm -hmm. again like sir link a lot said you know with you only having those four charges and then you're playing that gamble you're really gambling that everything you need runs levels one through five because at that point if it gets higher than that you're potentially locking yourself uh, yourself out of like game changing spells like life life two fast temper stuff like that Absolutely. but yeah I, I got nothing else i'm pretty happy with this party i think it's time to do this thing um yeah <laughs> Sky Bison is right. This game is very intense. It's kind of why we do what we're doing here. Um, we want to explain the game the best that we can so that newer players can be able to play it and, and not be completely overwhelmed by, uh, by the randomizer because it really is a lot. There is a lot going on. But uh, let's go on ahead and knock this thing out. Okay, so Sir Lancelot, whenever you're ready, uh, get started, and we will be seeing his, once he starts, it's about a 10 second delay or so. So uh, yeah. yeah, good luck and may the RNG be with you, as uh, Keo says in chat. Yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of, we're going to have the timer going just so we can gauge how long we've been doing this thing. But Sir Lancelot's going to go. He's going to be kind of behind us while we talk. And then he's going to show us first what we have in our shop. So as you can see, immediately we have a mage stick. That is fire two, and that is fire two. You can pick up on anybody you want to pick it up on. Everything else is kind of trash. I might pick up a wooden stick just so my knight has something to do, at least to kill Garland, but can't really do anything with how expensive all that stuff is. Yeah, so I've talked a lot in my um, VOD reviews about not necessarily going to all the weapon shops, but in this flag set, it's essential. We need to know where, what weapon we're going to be buying here. So definitely be checking the weapon and armor shops. All right. So again, nothing great here. Everything kind of rolled low. Uh, that mm -hmm. silver armor's good, but it's a little on the expensive side. And we could probably find something a little bit better, especially if an iron armor rolls up. So it's worth maybe remembering, but nothing spectacular here. Yeah, absolutely. I want to shout out our devs here. Um, they just added a feature where you can see if someone can equip it because they'll go into their victory pose. So you can check that out if you want to know who can learn a spell. See, same thing here. The white mage has their hands up. That means they can learn all these spells or they can learn the current highlighted spell. So, That's you know, big feature improvement here by our developers and really should help amazing. out new players. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I completely forgot about that. That's awesome. So in, in this in this spell slot, as you can see, uh, we don't have red mages, so we don't have to talk about permissions there. White mage can learn pretty much everything here. Nothing fantastic. Fog 2, maybe if you can't find Invis 2 and you need to stack up the armor. But, invis uh, but evasion is typically more of those things that you want to see. Yeah. Um, and then we've got Bane and Temper. So Bane wow. is an, yeah, this is some, this is a good seed for everybody to see because this is not great magic. Bane is great because it's an insta-kill poison spell, but it doesn't have great accuracy. Temper, of course, is the ultimate in-game spell, but isn't going to really do anything in the early game. Yeah, so we're definitely going to have to be relying on some 
melee swinging here unless we get some good magic and provoke our elfland because right now we do not have some great magic so this is a perfect seed to kind of demonstrate the power of some of these blurst weapons i also would definitely be keeping an eye out for that mage staff because that does cast fire too and if we don't find any early sweepers coming back to buy that for 18k is going to be really nice yeah and then lastly we've got 30 um you know 30 gold tents that's great you're gonna always want to pick up a few of those um, in case you need to do any encounter manipula uh, and any encounter manips on the overworld. Um, so he does the hard reset, comes out of Canaria. We get imps pretty early on, so that we know right away that we've got an encounter right off the hard reset. Not right off, but probably a good five to ten steps off the hard reset. And then we've got a second encounter not too far after that. Now, so my maybe Sir, Sir Lickalot, if we can save, yeah. Let's... Uh uh, he's obviously a little bit ahead, so I don't know what he's exactly doing. But maybe when we get out, we'll do an example of like just pressing hard reset a few times and just showing that every single time there's going to be an encounter like, I don't know what that was, eight steps or something in, and then another one in another two or three, just to kind of show exactly how that works. Versus if we do a soft reset, we'll see that we continue in the encounter table. Um, so we'll, we'll cover that as we go. Yeah, I think he did a hard reset going in because he was about, again, like 11 or so steps in before he got that first encounter. And then it was another like three steps and then he got that second encounter. Uh, since there's only six encounters and 256, um, there is going to probably be a pretty long run somewhere in there because we already know where the first two encounters are on, on this particular table. Mm -hmm. And uh, Bane takes down Garland. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. So we're going to get a tail right off the bat, which is going to be great if we can get into the air. And then, of course, we're going to get our ship. So, yeah, I did want to kind of highlight a little bit about Bane. This is a good opportunity to talk about, like, Bane and its strengths and its weaknesses. It is actually fairly high hit on a lot of early game enemies. But against later, anything, like, from the mid game onwards, basically anything that you're going to fight after the Earth Cave, um, Bane is not an effective spell. Oh, yeah, so here's Sir Linkalot um, showing us, look, he just hard reset. He hard, he's just continually hard resetting. Look, we're getting an encounter on the exact same square every single time. Um, so, you know, as long as you're hard resetting, it's going to consistently start at the same place every single time. Versus if he does a soft reset or does something else, um, we're going to get an encounter in a different location. Um, yeah. So, yeah. And, um, and the boat has a completely different encounter rate. I want to say it. Do you know exactly what it is? Is it's it three? three? It's three. Yeah. So it's, it's much lower. So you'll see bigger breaks in the encounter table. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see here, not interested in fighting that shark. Uh, typical early move is to go straight to Provoka. I'm interested to see if he's even going to check the shops, which he will check. Uh, Bane could have probably taken him down. We've got heal three and wall. I want to talk about... <laughs> you know, I, well, my gosh, you got information on what these spells do. Yeah, so by pressing select in this menu, not only can before you like figure out by seeing by who's putting their arms up, you can also press select to figure out what the spell does. So this is, this is just like, wow. Yeah, this is mind boggling here. So I do want to talk about heal three and specifically wall. Now wall, not as important, I think, in this flag set because we could potentially find ribbons for sale in the armor shop. But in normal flag sets, wall, especially in early wall, is huge because, again, it does act like a ribbon in battle. So we've got a rune sword and we've got a wizard stick. Wizard stick does confuse, not really awesome. Rune sword is good, but it's kind of expensive, so we're not going to worry about picking it up. But we do finally have a reliable AoE here in Lit 3. Mm -hmm. So Lit 3 is going to be a pretty good sweeper. I especially like the Lightning family of magic, as there's a lot of enemies in the game that are weak to it, especially ones that you're going to be dealing with in the early game, like, you know, everything on the sea and the river systems. So uh, Lit 3, really nice pickup here. Also, critically, it will take care of the pirates as well. Now, Bane will also take care of the pirates, um, but Lit 3 is going to do it 100% consistently, as pirates in vanilla have 9 HP. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so far, the shops have not had great weapons, to be honest. You'll see in a lot of uh, these seeds, if you roll a couple practices, that you'll be getting way better weapons. And we'll have to keep an eye out for that if that pattern continues. But there's still a lot of weapon shops to check, so, you know, we only need to find one really, really good weapon in the shops. 
Yeah. So Sir Lancelot, um, going to go on ahead and just play uh, play on the safe side and save before taking on the pirates. Um, we don't have safe pirates off, so pirates won't have a script or, or status touches or anything like that. So you don't technically have to really be that safe against them. But I do like the play just to make sure that he's good to go and, and, and doesn't take like a weird wipe against them. Uh, so so we, we got the... Yeah. We get the canal, so like a lot of um, movement options are now available to us. And taking a quick look at the armor shop. Okay, There's there a... we go. All right, so we've got uh, these are. I would say these two things that you're seeing here, power bunk and white shirt, are like key to find. White shirt specifically is just incredible to find in a shop because it does cast in viz too. And if you can buy four white shirts, if you can get together twelve thousand gold. That's uh, that's only two rounds of just doing a bunch of white shirts and you have evasion cap. Yeah, so the white shirt casts in Viz 2, as uh, Greg was mentioning, and if you get six casts of it, you're going to hit maximum evasion, where fiends will very, very rarely uh, hit you. So that's a really good endgame strategy. Uh, the power bonk, on the other hand, casts Saber, which is pretty similar to Temper, except it's a self-cast. So that's going to really let you um, buff up your knight in the endgame if your mages happen to die, or you just want to do it a little bit faster. So those are some really good things to keep in the back of your head. So things in the back of my head right now, um, are those two items, you know, I gotta go buy these things and provoke a potentially um, if I don't find something else later. Yeah, so I noticed that Sir Linkalock did pick up heals. One of the things that Thunder a lot always talked to, or Thunder a lot, Thunder, <laughs> Thunder yeah. Cloud always talked about was, uh, was, was that heal three, an early heal three. That way you're not using heal pots as much. You can use heal threes because it obviously gives you that 46 to 96 HP per person in your party that's essentially saving you nearly 8 to 12 heal pots mm -hmm. and all that extra menuing that you have to do. Mm -hmm. So heal uh, 3, big time, big time yeah. spell. Heal 3 is not only a safety spell, it's a time save spell. I 100% agree. Um, so Sir Lancelot, want to kind of chime in here. Why, why did you decide to go to Matoya's right now with no loose items? So with no loose items right now, what I'm concerned about is the fact I'm about to go to Elfland and you need a lot of money for Elfland. Mm -hmm. And I have almost none at the mm -hmm. moment. So I'm basically, that's why I did a save on the overworld first. Mm -hmm. Just because if there's nothing here, I'm just going to reset out and then continue. But if I find like a good stack of gold, a good item I could sell, something like that, then I can keep it. Um, that was the main reason there. I 100% yeah. agree. This is a really good play. Like, I, I, I fully support it. I kind of knew that was why you're doing it, but that makes a lot of sense. And nope, and does Matoya's not pay cave off. lets you down. So, yeah, big, big, big bearing play there to, to save where he did. As you can see, he only got a cabin and maybe like 150 gold. So instead of walking on that stuff out and whatever, he just reset back to where he left his ship. Um, Interesting, he's going to check this. We got Master's <laughs> Patel. We got a plus seven Master. Oh, this flag it's... sits delivering now. Yeah, uh, but at least I, we... I went back into the shop out, Carla, so y'all could see the stats because I hit select on it, so y'all can see that and see how good it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 70 <laughs> attack. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. That is yeah. a, that's a, that's a big Master. Who, who needs spells? I just need, uh, what is it, 52,000 gold that I'm good for. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <Yep. laughs> So yeah, hopefully that's kind of some of the fun that you might get to have if you play some of this flex that is buying four masses for your whole party. Um, yeah. But yeah, that's pretty cool. So of course, that's going to be a note that we're going to take. We can't afford it now. Um, also, Ice 3 here is a fantastic spell. Lock as well, potentially, if there's high evasion fiends. But Ice 3 is a good complement to Lightning. Ice 3 is the highest damage of the elemental spells. Um, but there's the most that most things, there's it is resisted by the most enemies. So it's a little bit situational. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing about Ice Three is is that it's great. Like you said, it's the highest damage of the of the elementals, but a lot of things tend to resist ice, especially when you end up in places like Ice Cave or mm -hmm. Marsh Cave of all places. Yeah, um, and everything that resists ice pretty much dies to Harm Four as well. So Harm Four is a good counterpart. Um, this is in the second slot, so it's only going to be available to the White Mage, but no Red Mage is here, so. That could be a nice pickup for the White Mage as well. Uh, of note right now, we have not yet seen a life spell. So that's definitely something that Sir Lancelot's going to be keeping an eye out for. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. And he's probably really happy you brought his White Mage along. And there's life in that 
unlearnable red mage slot there. So life, while it's very expensive, he will be able to pick it up here once he gets to level nine. So I've been talking to some ducklings about like, you know, how to start out. And what I would definitely recommend, especially if, for a seed like this, is have either a pen and paper or a notepad open and just be quickly jotting down things that you should be remembering. So like what is on my notepad right now is white shirt and power bonk in Provoca, um, mm -hmm. Masa for sale in Elfland, and mm -hmm. life for sale in Elfland. Just so that way I remember that these things all exist, as well as now this fast as well to make sure that I remember that all these things are here because veteran players will remember it in their head because they're autopiloting so much, but new players have so much going on that's all new to them that it's really, really difficult to like store this information long-term. So notes, definitely a must. Yeah, I want to point out that we got the trifecta of the magic at Fire 2 at level 4. Unfortunately, that Fire 2 isn't going to be fantastic because not only does it share a slot with uh, Fast, but we've got, of course, the Mage Sticks for sale in Canary, and that's infinite Fast 2s. Or sorry, Fast 2s, Fire 2s. But here we've got a cavalcade of, of Mage Armor. We've got Silver plus 2s, we've got Gold plus 3s, and we've got Copper plus 6s. And now Copper plus 6, uh, hopefully he'll select on that again, because I want to show you... 16 Absorb. Yeah, that's, that's massive. That's better than a Chain Armor. And at 176... I mean, he's got to go to Marsh Cave and kill a couple things and have enough money to pick those things up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, something that I might recommend to players, um, you know, certainly like a lot specifically, like going through all this slowly and making sure that we can see everything and like get all the options. Um, but if he wasn't running this for the purpose of this, something you might want to consider is either going straight to Marsh before you like travel all around Elfland just to get some money so that way you, you can buy some stuff on your first go around. You don't need to like buy everything on your first go around, but like getting four copper bracelet plus sixes here would be like huge improvement for Marsh's cave safety. Yeah, and right now he's showing us this whole encounter um, that he knows about. He knows there's two encounters kind of right off that hard reset, so he's checking the area out in case maybe he can get money for things before heading into Marsh Cave. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, it's not going to be great around here because, you know, you've obviously got ogres and imps and stuff, but if you did decide to go uh, to Crescent Lake because we can get over there. You can check around all the different encounter um, zones there. Maybe find some peds to get some early experience. <laughs> or, you know, later on in the game, if you're ready to get some levels, maybe you can find some T-Rexes around the uh, Mirage Desert. Uh, Northern Docks are off, but yeah. Well, that's what I mean later oh, on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, one thing of note, too, is that with that goal being plus 300, um, even these weak enemies are actually worth quite a bit bit of gold. You can't get, like, you know, you probably aren't going to be able to get Masa money this way, but you can definitely buy a couple spells and a little bit of gear with just fighting these things. Even in, Well, in the vanilla game, you'd be getting, like, almost nothing. Yeah, yeah but these Gurwolves with uh, Stun Touch, that's annoying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's I, gonna... like, I like how they back row. Like, the first three, like, just attacked my back rows. Like, I'm going to kill this one. Like, okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, but you can see he's only taken three encounters and he's already at like 2,500 gold. So he, he can grab all those copper bracelets now and just make himself a little bit more fortified for this eventual Marsh Cave dive here that he's going to take. Now, there's two places you can go. You can head up Marsh Cave right now. We don't have a warper exit, so we won't be able to get in and out super duper quick. Uh, or you can head over to Crescent Lake, of course, and uh, talk to the sages and see what kind of item that they have. But Sir Link a lot right now is going to go on ahead and pick up kind of these cheaper spells. You know, Ice 3 was three, uh, 321. Harm 4 was like 120 something. It was like super cheap. Mm -hmm. So I may as well grab those spells while we're here. Yeah, for sure. Um, I've done a lot of times when I've entered Elfland and like just checked the level 3 magic. If I'm like, you know, have like $3,000 and not bothered gone to the back. Um, yeah. And, you know, level 3 magic is much more affordable than level 4 magic on, on average. And okay. Sir Lickalot showing us the encounter manipulation here. Um, so he just took the first two fights in the encounter table um, and then soft reset out of both of them. And then in doing so, he got this nice long run all the ways here without having to take those stun touching wolves uh, on the way out. So that's our kind of first instance here. Now, wow. Okay, this encounter table is super, super front heavy. Uh, Sir Lickalot, maybe you can uh, chime in a little bit uh, once, you know, maybe you get to Marsh Cave or whatever, but it looks like there's kind of four relatively quick encounters, and then there's going to be a massive run. 
Yeah, that's what it looks like. I haven't gotten to really check to see how bad or massive the run is after the four encounters. So that's why I'm only kind of doing a two encounter and then going into Marsh Cave so I can see mm -hmm. um, how long that run actually is before kind of planning the rest of the encounter manipulation. And kind of while we have you, why are you deciding to go to the bottom of Marsh Cave first instead of going to the top? Whereas in week one, we went to the top of Marsh Cave first. Because there's no loose items. I mean, I could go looking there for a ribbon or stuff like that, but I guess being, uh, I guess more of a veteran, it's, I'm not really so much worried about loose items at this mm -hmm. point. It's just like, I'm going for the incentives first. Mm -hmm. um, that top is just kind of like a, if, if there was a bunch of gold there, cool. But it, if it's something I missed, then I miss it at that point. Well, there's just as much chance, too, of the ribbon being in the chest that you're going to open on the bottom of Marsh, potentially, as there is of the ribbon being at the top of Marsh, right? So you might as well check these chests first, because it's on the way to the incentive. Yeah, and then you can find something like vendor gear, like that Opal minus two helm. We're not going to use that, and it should sell for pretty decent money. Uh, this is one of our first uh, shuffled spike tiles. That's the, oh, we got our loot, or as it's called here, the organ. Don't ask how my characters are carrying that around, please. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> also, look away as Sir like a lot equips his co copper bracelet plus six. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I definitely um, didn't spend time to get copper bracelets and forget to equip them. That didn't happen. <laughs> it, it happens to everyone, to be honest. And like, definitely a good thing to note. Uh, if you are getting hit and you're like, "Why am I taking so much damage?" Check your armor menu. I've everyone's done that multiple, multiple times. So uh, no shame uh, there. Uh, and also, so got seven thousand gold as well. Yeah, so we've we've actually hit our six encounters here, uh, which he was able to make it all the way down here pretty, you know, he should be getting back to the front of that encounter table. As you can see, we're, we're now on encounter number eight now. So we should be getting back to that kind of longer run here. You'll see he'll, he'll be able to make it to about halfway through this next four before he hits those next two back-to-back -back encounters. Mm -hmm. Um so there's that one there. And then right after this, he'll get like maybe two steps. Or yeah, one, one step. And then boom, another encounter. And then he'll have another kind of long run in here. Now something I want to talk about, um, maybe hopefully he'll be able to do is, we didn't do any door stuff here. Um, Sir Link a lot. Let's, uh, while we're in here, let's talk about doors and hugging walls for a second. Hmm. So, Sir Lake a lot's been, um, okay, perfect. We got I, was actually already, I was actually already doing it as you were talking about. I'm like, yeah, I should nice. probably do that. And I was doing it on the next floor as you were talking about it. So, all yes. of these steps that he's taking right now are not increasing the encounter table. Um, every single one of them. Hugging the bottom of walls inside rooms and dungeons does not increase the encounter table. And the door, as well as the step before and after the door, do not increase the encounter table. So, you want to maximize how many steps you can take on these quote unquote safe tiles. Yeah. So yeah, as you can see, he's been going on for like a million years and, and nothing's happening. You're never going to get an encounter hugging the inside of these walls here or being in front of doors and stuff. So you'll notice that people will purposefully walk in front of doors uh, to rooms, even if they're not planning on checking those rooms, uh, just so they can save that extra encounter stuff. So, and here we go. We're going to see a lot of this from Sir Link a lot. He's going to always hard reset coming out of or going into places. He's going to burn off two encounters and he's going to move. And he could potentially drop another tent, walk, hard, uh, so either do the hard reset or soft reset at that point, and then keep doing the same thing so he can avoid overworld encounters for the rest of his life. <laughs> now, once in a while, you're going to want to take a few, especially because if he wants a little bit more gold or a little bit more money, um, but that's definitely something that we're going to be seeing throughout the season. Hopefully, um, that that kind of you know explanation of it helps. And as you watch him continue to do it, but if you have any more questions about that, please let us know. Uh, I do also want to note uh, just a small thing for people who are like really paying attention and want to test this: the encounter table does not always go in the same direction after it runs through twice. So you know your first, in this case, twelve encounters are going to kind of make sense, but after that, it might not. So mostly focus on the encounter table for the first you know four or five encounters yeah because once you get past encounter 12 then it actually wraps back around mm -hmm. on itself mm -hmm. um and, and that's something you can obviously use as good information uh when you're diving the final dungeon because go moding the final dungeon you're gonna go through the encounter table twice mm -hmm. easily 
So knowing when those encounters are going to happen, you can maybe avoid some nasty encounters, especially on Kraken's floor or on Tiamat 2's floor. Mm -hmm. So we've just cleared Marsh and we got the loot, which while great, is not a... a oops, I marked the key. Uh, we got the loot. So while that is an item that we need to win, it is not something that's going to give us more locations available, which means at this point, the Crescent Lake must be the item that we're looking for. It's not guaranteed to be the canoe directly, but it will eventually lead to the canoe. Yeah. So, yeah, exactly. I mean, we kind of had a 50-50 there. A lot of people may have... Ch oh my gosh, look at these. <laughs> look at these. Look at this gear here. So we got Vorpal plus two. I mean, it's not going to be better than the Masa plus however much. But, you know, it's got that massive crit rate, as you can see. It's 66 there. A little bit higher than the Masa plus seven. Um but it's obviously infinitely more expensive than the Masa that we saw earlier. And then, of course, our Excal, too. Um, but again, we can't really afford any of this stuff right now. I mean, he can sell that Wear Sword if he wants to. Doesn't really need it. He's got that Silver plus six axe there. But yeah, for the most part, um, you could keep checking weapon shops after you find the Masa plus seven, but you don't really need to because the Masa plus seven is the alpha there is there is nothing nothing that's going to replace that um on the other hand i would th this is actually pretty decent like mid game gear right now iron plus three and iron shield plus three both actually pretty solid but no real good late game armor yet so that steel plus four the dark moon our restreamer tonight called out uh is something that i would be having in the back of my head is like potentially something i might want to pick up uh later yeah steel armor known for having just a terrible evade penalty but once you add that plus four modifier to it, it actually lowers it from what 33 down to about 25 so it's not as horrible that is as it is in the vanilla game but i mean you get so much more absorbed you go from 34 up to you know 41 so it's 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 pretty solid at that point uh we got quadex in the warp slot which i know there's warp there but quadex in that um that third slot there we can't pick that up until after promotion as you can see his black may just have their arms down but we can't grab warp right now which uh warp is it's a pretty it's pretty important spell in my opinion being able yeah. to move around it not only is faster it's also safer in places like ordeals ice cave waterfall as getting out safely is pretty important and even a one cast of warp can save you so much time throughout the course of the seed so um definitely a priority pick up there yeah um, and there's fade which is of course the best white magic spell as far as damage is concerned in the game mm -hmm. and uh ruse is uh one of those spells if we were running like higher percentage uh enemies ruse would definitely be a good pickup especially if your knight gets one shot you can throw a bunch of ruses on your white mage and have your white mage uh, survive things. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so stopping in Melmont here, um, you know, pretty nice to like, get some information, but unfortunately Melmont will not have what we're looking for. Um, if you were running this as a speedrunner in a race, would you um, stop in Melmont before you went to Crescent Lakes or Link a lot? Just to kind of check the spells as well as like weapons mm -hmm. and armor. The, the main reason I'm still checking weapons at this mm -hmm. point is not so much I'm looking for weapon because yeah, nothing's going to be the Masa Plus 7 on this seed whatsoever. Mm -hmm. It's more like potentially finding a defense or something yep. like that. Um, mm -hmm. Just a nice little thing where Topher's not terrible, but it, it doesn't hurt to kind of have a backup in case you do need that evasion on your characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the defense casts Ruse, which is very similar to Invis, except the difference is it is twice as effective, but only hits the current caster instead of Invis 2 hitting the whole team. So um, the defense sword is a really nice way to like really buff up a single melee damage dealer, like the knight, for example, or to protect your life caster, uh, like the white mage. So yep. defense sword definitely would be a nice pickup, but on the like nice to have or like want to have list, definitely not in the need to have list. Yeah, I think I find the white shirt to be a, a, at least a little bit more on the useful side, especially since, you know, since we do know they're in shops and because it can multi-target, you can get those evasion stacks just that much quicker. It's like one and a half rounds of combat versus three rounds of combat if you have four defense swords. Mm -hmm. So I like what Sir Linkalot's doing here. So notice he was encounter manipulating all the time and then he stopped and this was on purpose because he wanted to take some fights on the way to Crescent Lake um, because he wanted to get a few levels and some gold. Like you'll notice that these trolls are just giving us like over a th like 1800 gold for one fight. So taking some encounters, especially as you start to hit this like higher enemy zone, a higher level enemy zone is a is a nice play. 
and there's uh two encounter zones in here too so uh you know if, you, if you're right next to crescent and then if you go uh kind of far east of crescent there there could be a different set of enemies mm -hmm. uh so you could potentially find something that either gives you better exp or gold depending on what you're looking for here uh again nothing great in this item shop i mean yep. yeah i mean that shield is eh, it's okay um and yeah i mean man not like I, I am not very excited about any of the stuff we've seen so far. Um, Exit's fantastic pickup that you can get on your White Mage, as well as the Cure 4. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Cure 4, the best curative spell in the game, aside from Life 2. And then there's Nuke, which is uh, Black Mage learnable. So, But we got to wait until we get to, what, like level 16 before we can even cast that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like... We're buying it. Yeah, these all kind of, like, the Cure 4 there, for example, kind of gets put in that notepad of, like, things I might want to pick up once I have the floater and a bunch of gold. But you'll notice that one of the key defining features of this flag set is there's a lot of things that you want to pick up once you have a bunch of gold. But, you know, where are you going to get that gold? And, and are you going to fight enemies? Are you going to, you know, how are you going to do that? And that's something that you're going to have to plan out as you play this flag, this flag set of, like, you know, where's my money coming from? Am I going to open boxes for money? You know, different decisions like that. Yeah, one of the things, uh, I mean, that could, that you could definitely utilize uh, with this particular flag set, especially with the way the encounter table is, and I'm never a, a proponent for doing any sort of overworld grinds or, or, or even taking battles on the overworld, but knowing that that uh, gold modifier is like plus 300 and the EXP is so good, I, I, we know those two encounters are right off the encounter table. Like, do a hard reset fight a couple battles, do another hard reset, burn off a couple more lit two, threes, so forth and so on. Just kind of keep doing that through mm -hmm. to make some extra uh, gold and, and money before we head up these cities. That way we're not like double or, or um, uh, you know, double or triple diving uh, cities. Uh, we have enough money going into them. Or as Diva, uh, Davis says in chat, this might actually, I mean, I'm never excited about doing a pop grind, but it may not be a bad idea to, to, to do that so that we can enter cities one time versus, uh, you know, having to make multiple trips into cities. As kind of a thank you for everyone who's tuning in for this, Dr. Derby, I'll also give another kind of hint that I found to be quite effective in this flag set, which is uh, checking the Hall of Giants a little bit early for those spike tiles. If you can find a good spike tile, you can prevent a lot of double dips, and it doesn't take that long to go uh, quickly check a grind. Not for levels, but for money. So something to think about as well. So as of right now, we do know 100% for certain uh, because there aren't really any incentive locations left that this Adaman is either going to lead to another fetch quest, whether it be the Herb, the Crystal, or the TNT, or it's going to lead to the Canoe because it can't really lead to anything else uh, because the Canoe opens up two more incentive locations and um, and Ordeals and Waterfall. Yeah, and Oh, don't, sorry, and three more in Ice Cave as well. Mm -hmm. And don't... Uh, Waterfall is not open because no Northern Docks again, but... Gosh, you, sorry. Yeah, <laughs> we're, we're so used <laughs> to Northern Docks, it's okay. Um, yeah. uh, but I did want to note that also, uh, some Ducklands have missed this, but the, there's also Canaria Key Locked as well. So the key is a fetch quest in this flag set, as well as being something you need to win. So uh, make sure you remember if you get the key that the Canaria Key Locked incentive is going to have something that you're looking for. And it also opens up three spike tiles that are relatively free. Hooray, mm. or Hey, so, hooray. So the three spike tiles I'm mentioning, there's, yep, and there's our canoe, kind of a no-brainer. Uh, it could have led to the key, like you said, which could have led to the canoe, but we knew canoe was kind of kind of be the end of this whole thing. So, uh, Sir Lancelot, let's have our runner chime in here. You have a bit of a difficult decision. Um, do you want to go to Ice Cave or Ordeals next with level five warp? Ordeals. Okay, and um, main, why? main reason why, um, Ice Cave, I I need like I don't necessarily need warp to make it, I guess, more easy at this mm -hmm. point, or a lot easier than what it would be. Ordeals, the pillar maze is there, but you can always just memorize the pillar maze if you don't mm -hmm. have warp charges. Whereas if I'm going to ice with no levels uh, mm -hmm. of warp, I have to go through the entire thing twice, and at mm -hmm. level nine. Ice can get scary extremely fast, whereas typically Ordeals is one of those dungeons in vanilla. It's a very scary dungeon, whereas in Randomizer, because everything rolls away from it, it's usually not that scary of a dungeon. Yeah, Sorcerers are like my favorite EXP pinatas outside of like eyes. So like 
or ordeals is a really uh, nice place to visit. The other thing too is that ordeals tends to reward like lots of warps charges, whereas ice cave only requires one realist, like one to really make a big difference. So you're not going to hit, you know, seven warp charges to make ordeals a lot faster, but you can probably you might be able to get to one to hit before you hit ice cave. Yeah, and I like what um, Sir Lancelot's doing right here. Uh, this is a good spot, especially if you know that you've got encounters off the hard reset, to go on ahead and check because you got Sarias. You could potentially hit like Gurpedes. Gurpedes aren't fantastic, but if they rolled low, you could get something off of them. It's not great. The Sarias are the thing you're kind of excited to see. These Catmen, not so much. Um, I was going to say something about ordeals too, especially when we're talking about the encounter table here. You're going to see infinitely less encounters in ordeals than you're going to see in Ice Cave because we don't have warp or exit, therefore you're going to have to do the full thing. We're going to see upwards of like 10 to 12 encounters in Ice Cave if we have to do the whole thing. Whereas once we figure out the pillar maze and ordeals, we may only see about four encounters in here. Mm -hmm. Wow. <laughs> wow. Okay, well, I figured Sir Linkalock got, Link got the blessed ordeals, um, so not even remotely punished for not having warp, um, but like just another reason, I guess, why, you know, there's no getting lucky in terms of pillars in Ice Cave. You have to do it twice without warp or exit. Uh, ordeals, this can happen. Yeah, and I also feel like ordeals has just better EXP enemies, like... Mummies and whiz mummies. It's not great late game, but if you can take a pack of them down, especially something like this, uh, you're gonna get money from them. You're gonna get the XP. It's definitely better than than like you said, risking your life in a place like Ice Cave. Mm -hmm. And not only that, ordeals is quite slow to get to with the floater. Like the difference between the floater getting here and the ship is minimal. Versus Ice Cave, it's a lot faster to fly to Ice Cave than it is to take the river system. Although we may need to take the river system anyways if this is in our floater next. All right, so we've got our fire tile, which is, of course, uh, shuffled out of a uh, volcano. Uh, runnable, so obviously got away from that. Um, he burned off two before coming in here, got his two back to back. I don't see another encounter in his future, do you? Uh, maybe one more on the way, on like the step route out, but. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't again... yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I was just going to say, I did want to point out, too, that he is opening boxes here, even though there's no loose. And once again, I think that's for a little bit of a chance at gear, but also just for some cash. And unfortunately, this is one of those womp womp situations where the 50-50 does not pay off. Unfortunately, uh, that slab's not going to be useful now. And that just lets us know right now that Ice Cave was the answer. Uh, now, I will say that you gained levels coming through here. Therefore, you will have that warp charge now. Mm -hmm. You may have enough warp charges to just warp yourself out of Ice Cave and not even have to deal with any of the nonsense that is Ice Cave. Yeah, I think you'll have to rewalk the like super oh. short floor and the long one, but that's it. Unless he takes, oh, a little grind here. They're dragons. They're worth lots of money. And they mm -hmm. have almost no health. Yeah. Yep. So uh, potential grind spot here. These guys are kind of scary in vanilla because they have the, they spam Blizzard, uh, but not so much here. And as you can see, gain a couple levels here. Make sure he has enough warp charges to go into Ice Cave, do the warp trick, and then warp himself out of there and not have to really worry about the scariness that could potentially be Ice Cave. Now, Ice Cave is scary in vanilla because of all the stun touch, the sorcerers, and, you know, the frost wolves and, you know, uh, Blizzard... Uh, white D's and all that stuff. But what makes Ice Cave scary and the randomizer is there's just so many different encounter or so many different uh, enemy types. So something nasty could potentially roll on all those different enemy types that are down there. You've got the mages, you've got the sorcerers, you've got, uh, you know, frosties, you, uh, frost wolves, images. Uh, wizards, uh, mummies, bones, red bones, cockatrices. I mean, there's just so many different enemies that are down there, and you're just bound to find one of those enemies that's going to have something dumb that's going to kill you. Uh, yeah, and I also I was just about to point out what uh, DVS was saying too, which is that that was six thousand gold per encounter. So like, we got massa money now if we want it. Yeah, and massa's in. Uh, Elfland, which is kind of on the way, so I wouldn't be shocked if he made the stop there. It may not be something to do 
right this moment, but I mean, it is right there, so you may as well boo it. Yeah. I will be, because I need to stop at Melman still, because I only actually have warp on one of the black mages right now, so I don't know if I have enough charges to actually get myself out of Ice Cave. Hmm. Um, but are I've only gonna, have it on one. Are you going to inner sea dock or outer sea dock? Like, are you going to go around or inner sea? No, I'm going to go to the outer sea and dock. Okay. I'm going to stop. I'm stopping at Melman to pick up warp on my other black mage, and then as well as um, another spell just in case. I'm grabbing Brack at the same time, but yeah, I'm going to go be picking up the uh, Masa for sure, as well as I wrote down there's pro rings there that I believe were 4k a piece, so I can get my entire party protected from death and get a nice uh, defense boost as well. Yeah, I like the pickup of Brack here because that's obviously going to be an easy Kraken and Tia kill. Um, pretty much yeah. the only... <laughs> Only use usefulness of Brack. <laughs> yeah. Um, in, in that particular level slot. Like an early oh, Brack yeah. is great. You know, if you need, if if you just have no other way to kill kind of the early enemies, but we already have that kind of early bane. Mm -hmm. uh, but Brack is definitely going to be useful if, um, if you want to just take a cheeky, um, you know, uh, one shot of, of Kraken or insta kill on Kraken or, or Tio. 26.9% chance of hitting. So pretty good. Yeah, so uh, not quite enough money to pick up masses on everybody, but it's not really necessary to grab mass on everybody. I'm tempted to buy one for my white mate just so they have something to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, rings were actually only twenty three hundred, so never mind. I lied. So, but that mass of plus seven obviously going to be the best thing ever. And, then, yeah. and, and and right now you're what level fifteen, so at this point you don't even like really need to be grabbing that many levels anymore just kind of move along and you know try to get class change done and then potentially gain the rest of your levels on the way through the rest of the game i'm not actually even so much worried about class changing right now just because of the knight's limited mp i don't actually really need to worry about class changing until 20 on him yeah and we still haven't seen ribbons in shops though and that war that wall spell would be kind of nice to have on both uh your knight and your your white mage but yeah you're you're right yeah. We only have one armor shop left to try and get a ribbon on. So, you know, we're, that is... Considering how bad the shops have been, I'm not holding my breath at all right now. <laughs> yeah. Of course, Dragon Armor, Aegis Shield, um, ribbon in Gaia is coming up, but you know. Yeah, we're, that's what we're hoping for anyway. So it looks like he's going to go on ahead and sail around this way. Um... Yeah, if you're an Elfland, this is definitely the faster way. I would have debated inner sea docking yeah. just because... Depending on the fetch quest, um, of course, if you're if you get the floater right away, it doesn't matter. But if there's fetch quests, being on the inner sea can be a little bit nicer than being on the outer sea in terms of turning them in. But you can yeah, also just walk around the inner continent. The worst case scenario here is like the ruby. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. The only thing that you really don't want to see uh, out of Ice Cave is the ruby. But we've still got pretty much everything else on the table that could potentially lead to the floater. We still have crystal. We still have TNT. We still have herb, and we still have crown, and we still have key. So that's like four different things versus the ruby being the one thing that could potentially lead to it. Yeah. Um, but again, it, it's up to it, that's kind of those are kind of the thoughts that are going through everyone's head when you're running the game. Where am I going to dock? Would it make sense to do an inner sea dock um, and then do the river system, or would it make sense to dock over here? Um, so yeah, we're getting some nice encounter manipulation there by Sir Link a lot. Um, he is still getting some encounters, but getting to dodge a fair number of them right off the bat. Um, and we will be heading straight to Ice Cave. Now, a lot of runners might be tempted to do Volcano right now, and that's definitely a viable choice. Um, you could do Volcano right now, but the goal of doing Volcano would just be to proximity route it, because it's right there, more than it would be to get anything else from it. It would just be, I'm going to go light the fire orb while I'm here. The main reason I would consider doing that is if I wanted to get a few more warp charges, if I didn't have enough levels, maybe go there and then house up in front of Ice Cave. But other than that, I think going straight to Ice Cave makes way more sense. You can always go back to Volcano once you have the floater. You know your progression is in, is in Ice Cave at this point. Yeah. So Grimps with, with Cremate, and I remember them having Cure 4 earlier, so they are not very nice Grimps, as you can see. Mm -hmm. uh, Life Reboot asking in chat about the early uh, Sarda and Sages being disabled. It is not disabled. We do have those on. Uh, but obviously, Guardian Marcus was able to, uh, or Rock Solid was also able to answer that question for you as well. 
as you can see, Sir Link a lot burning off those two encounters before heading in there. Knows he's going to get two encounters right off the, uh, back to back here. Uh, we got Wizards, and then, of course, we're going to see the next one right now, which is going to be Wizards again. They didn't do anything too crazy, so we're happy about that. And then he should get another long run before getting those uh, last two encounters on the encounter table here. Mm -hmm. And, like, you know, Gregly Puff is making this sound very easy. He's like, oh, yeah, of course, you know, we're going to get these two, and then I'm going to get a long run. But it takes a lot of practice to have that very internalized dialogue of, you know, there's going to be an encounter now, I'm going to get some steps, all that stuff. Uh, but you just have to start, I, I challenge you to start thinking about when am I going to get my first encounter? And if you can start with that, you'll be able to build up the skill set. So start with that and you'll be is this uh, game a step on? in the right direction. So real quick, I know that Sir Linkalock did that like super fast, but if you have warp, that's the warp trick that we were talking about here is like go around to the top hole, I guess, the top little hole yep. and uh, hop down. Uh, to the drop down and then use the warp spell to get back to that same hole you were in you can check all three of those chests and then that's it and then as you can see he had a few more warp charges left was able to warp his way back out of ice cave and we are done with ice cave and only got to see what three encounters two yeah two? yeah two <laughs> So yeah, not too bad. Uh, that was a that was a good looking earth cave or ice cave, and wizards weren't too scary. So uh, we got the floater right away. So no more fetch quests, which means fetch quests are going to be on the uh, back end of this whole situation. I, I do want to point out that like the decision to go to our deals first and then warp out of ice cave was so much safer than doing it the other way around. And this is a lot of the time why you see runners like Sir Link a lot get through uh, relatively easily, whereas sometimes new runners can be like stuck places for hours. Um, and it's just because that decision to do this like risk mitigation strategy so we can get out of ice cave so quickly makes a huge difference here in the safety of this run. Um, Greg Lee Prof was impressed by uh, Sir Link a lot's fast feet there using the river system free tiles. Um, to save a couple steps yeah so every time you hop into the river system and out of the river system that is a free tile so you can go in out and then you'll see people like will zigzag like he was doing there earlier and uh you won't it won't move the encounter table along so now we got our floater we have a lot of places we can go to we talked about waterfall we still haven't seen a vendor item uh first thing most people do is check the sarda item because we do have, uh, you know, we have early Sarda on, and all you gotta do is run in here, talk to Sarda, warp out, and you're good to go. And we got our key. So now we're gonna go probably hit up the key lock before doing class change, if class change is even on the table for uh, Sir Link a lot. Are you gonna do class change? Yeah, I am gonna do class change. The main thing I'm thinking of right now is I know my vendor item is somewhere in Caravan Onrak Gaia, plus hopefully there's good armor. I don't have any money at all right now again. Um, so I'm hoping to get maybe some money, something that I can sell or anything like that before doing that. And, mm -hmm. uh, we'll see, but yeah. yeah, I need to get money somehow. Yeah. yeah I'm pretty happy with your, oh, sorry. Oh, I was just going to say key lock's a good way to try and get some money. Um, yeah, <laughs> that, that's all I was going to say. <laughs> yeah. All right. So we got a bottle. Uh, we did get the slab. Did you talk to Dr. Yoon earlier? I need to do that. I was going to okay. go back that way and then just go straight north. All right, perfect. So that's uh, this is actually going to be pretty good as far as routing is concerned, uh, being able to talk to Dr. Yoon and then be able to do the slab and bottle turn in at the same time. Now, Sir Linkalot, I'm going to just, uh, you know, throw this idea into your mind since we're talking about money and the potential things that could be in Gaia. Uh, I imagine that Sir Linkalot will potentially uh, head towards uh, Lafayne first to do the slab turn in, maybe hit up some encounters on the way to get some money, maybe? Yep, that was the plan. Yep, and then uh, and then head up to Gaia and then do the bottle turn in so he can get all those kind of things done at the same time after, of course, doing the uh, uh, tail turn in and uh, checking Cardia Isles. So, yeah, if he hadn't done the slab turn in there, obviously he would have gotten looped and that would have felt really bad. <laughs> no one wants to get looped. Loop is no fun.
So yeah, remembering to check the Oasis for the shop item, always important. Yep, I like that ribbon pickup though, so that's just one less wall cast we have to worry about there. Plus we can keep our, you know, our life caster alive, mm -hmm. our white mage. Who could also be our primary damage dealer if things go wrong, because he's, that white mage is wielding a massive plus seven. <laughs> That is true. Things could go wrong quickly. Uh, Jat was talking about, like, just because the scaling is low doesn't mean you don't need to prepare yourself for an ugly Topher. Uh, you know, even even if Kraken doesn't decide to one-shot everybody, Kraken can still break out a, a one four nuke nuke combo or nuclear-nuclear combo on you and, and wreck your party pretty easily. Um, because uh, the boss pool is its own separate thing, like all the skills and uh, spells that the bosses have um, roll only back into bosses. Uh, there are four nuclears in the in the pool out of a total of, I think, 16 skills total. So you have a pretty good chance of seeing nuclear roll somewhere in Topher on one of those bosses. Uh, I did want to point out while well, Sir Lancelot's looking for some money and some gear, um, there's a question in chat. Did he go back for Cure 3? And the answer to that is no, but Cure 3 is not a spell that I would generally consider as like a must go back for, but Cure 4, on the other hand, would be a pretty big pickup. So Cure 3 is just kind of right below the threshold of spells that I tend to care about, like I would take notes on. But Cure 4 is a spell that, in many cases, I will go back and pick up as it really increases, you know, late game safety against things like nukes and nuclears, just like what Greg Lee Puff was talking about. Yeah. And so right now, again, we've got about 10 grand coming into here. We're really hoping to see, I'd, I'd really like to see ribbons. We got life two there, which would have been an awesome pickup if we had the money for it. Um, and we will not have ribbons this seed. So, man, we don't have like any great, I mean, that flame armor is gonna be about the best night gear you're gonna get. And I would probably sell that at Opal for that. Yeah, that flame armor yeah. plus seven is actually really, really good. Like in terms of absorb, like that's and that and that yeah. opal armor is selling for big money. So you could probably pick up a few things for that. My concern right now, first, and it's why I'm checking the shop before is, and I'm glad I did. Um, was vendor item for my vendor item, which mm -hmm. I did find it, and it ended up being nice and cheap. So okay. Oh come on, vendor crown for one fifty five. Nah, not, vendor not charm that, for not that good. <laughs> yeah, the 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 crown, uh, the crown bug has been fixed on this uh, on this update. So no more no more one fifty crowns. But picking up this flame armor, um, I don't know if he actually did it there. Oh yeah, he did. Okay, yeah, that's like excellent end game armor, and also provides resistance. So, you know, definitely a good pickup. I'd say he's pretty well armored at this point. The one big exception is like a second ribbon, but he has the ribbon for the critical life caster slash wall caster. And in the late game, he can move that over to his knight. I also want to highlight that with two massive plus sevens, if your knight dies, it's not like game over, like it would be in some other um, fights. Yeah, and I was going to say, is this game even randomized? We got Floater in, in, I... in Ice Cave. We got Oxio from the bottle turn in. What is even going on? Yeah. Uh, a couple questions. Uh, is there a chance that a seed would not have a spell available just based on RNG? Well, there's no spells that are in the that are like coded into the vanilla game that aren't available. So because of that, there's the same number of slots as spells. So you're guaranteed to get every single spell that is in the vanilla game. You just don't know where it is. Yep. That's a good question, though. No, I like that question. O yeah, on the other it, hand, oh, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, and... And if we just had shops shuffled turned on, then anything that would normally be in a shop would be shuffled into a shop. So you'd always see, you know, the chain armor. You'd always see the gold ar uh, uh, arm, uh, good Lord, gold circles. You'd always see the uh, pro rings and stuff like that. So uh, there would always be the same amount of, of yeah. items uh, for, sh uh, for slots. Thank you. Yeah, gr gr great minds think alike, because I was actually just about to say the exact same thing. <laughs> but with the elite caster gear, you're not guaranteed those items. So you yeah. do need to be a little bit more careful. And that's why we're checking for like ribbons and armor and stuff like that. Like what weapons and armor you're getting is all randomized, but you're likely to find something good somewhere. And in this case, Sir Linkalot's found a lot of really powerful things. Um, another thing I really do want to point out though here is that this is kind of a little bit of a deeper boss strategy, but the fact that you have power gauntlets for sale, which cast Saber, and you have a Masa wielder on the White Mage, that really can be an excellent uh, backup strategy. Is one thing the White Mage can need is a little bit of extra damage. 
um, yep. at times. So having power bonks available for both of your um, Massa wielders is really, really nice here. Yeah, I mean, and then we talked about, again, I, I mentioned it when he was inside of um, Melman, you know, with Ruse being level five. And I think we had a cure for that was also not light night learnable. You know, if things really do go south and you have a power bonk and you have those Ruse casts on your white mage, you can make your white mage at least survive the battle and then be able to use that uh, white locked life and life two spells uh, to bring everybody back to life. Um, so right now, the only place he really has left to check as far as incentives are, 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 are concerned is this waterfall check, which I like the waterfall check now uh, because A, he's on the northern continent, and B, he has the Oxio, so he can go in here, find out what's in here, and then go on ahead and kill Kraken before doing key. And, of course, the other thing he has to do is... Uh, it, not key, I'm sorry. The other thing he has to do is uh, do the ruby check, uh, ah, check Titan you. Shrove. Never mind. I, my item count is good. I thought I was missing something because I was like, hey, there's two key items left that we need and there's only one location left, but we haven't done the ruby turn in. So, yeah. Um, I did want to point out a kind of a general motif that uh, new runners should be thinking about when they're routing, which is to try and avoid the on rack continent if you can until you get the oxial. So you can do exactly the double dick that Greg Puff was uh, talking about here, where you do both of these at the same time. So definitely like that should be a pattern that you should try and avoid. It's, it's very similar to trying to not dive into Earth Cave, except for maybe Earth One before you get the rod. Yeah, um, somebody in chat was asking about checking the magic shop. Once you get to the certain area of the game, especially like level seven, level eight, if you have everything you need, there's no real need to check out of the way magic shops, which is why you won't see a lot of people checking the Lefanish magic shops, why you won't see people checking Gaia level eight, why you won't see people checking Onrak level seven, unless you don't have a critical spell, like um, if you don't have a life spell yet, or if you don't have temper, or you don't have fast. I think those are really the only spells I generally yep. look in those shops for. Yep. because of how important fast temper and uh, any sort of life spells are. Yeah. So I like this uh, van this French vanilla, or not French vanilla, I'm sorry, vanilla spike tile here in Waterfall. It, what is going on? What are, what are we even doing here? I don't are know. We we're, playing we're, trying a randomizer? To, like, we're trying to explain to everyone that this is a randomized game and then the game just keeps telling us no. But you know, we have a Masa plus seven, so I think we're pretty convincing. <laughs> So yeah, I imagine he'll get through this. We'll get the robot item. Uh, the only thing, what what do we have left? We've got we've got to find the rod, right? Which is gonna be behind a. We got we got the rod and uh, the cube left, and one of them is gonna be behind a bunch of fetch quests since we haven't gotten the herb, the crystal, the TNT, the crown. Yeah. Sir Linkalot's going to be flying across the entire world to do these last few turn-ins a couple times, but on the bright side, he's also going to be able to route in Earth Cave, Volcano, and things like that once he finds the rod and, you know, as he's kind of sailing around, so... Yeah, uh, Sir Linkalot's going to, uh, I guess, burn off these last couple of lit twos on uh, these mummies here just to gain a couple extra levels before uh, moving on to... Uh, Moving on to Sea Shrine here. And at this point, I imagine Sir Lancelot's going to start putting his foot on the pedal here. Um, the, this encounter, I, th I think at least part of the reason why he's taking it is not only is it like it's OK for levels, but it's got a lot. It's worth a lot of gold and yeah. gold is very much at a premium in the seed. It's kind of an interesting take on like buy. Th this is like, um, you know, buying your way to victory in many regards. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that should give me enough money, plus maybe a few more encounters, but it should give me enough money to go pick up Life 2 out of uh, Gaia, mm -hmm. as well as I still need to go pick up White Shirts, Power Bonks, and I need to pick up Cure 4, and those are, that's kind of like the last purchase is I need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a uh, uh, question in chat, somebody wondering what was in Ordeals, it was the Slab. Uh, slab is what you normally find in C Incentive. Ooh, Frost Wolves with Thunder. Good thing you didn't uh, hang out in Ice Cave very long. Mm -hmm. uh, we also, you know, we're talking about is this even randomized, but uh, I don't think they have Thunder in the vanilla game. No, uh, no. I was going to say they stole that from uh, from Bloodies, I think. Mm -hmm. Dragon Breath but weapons. Still terrifying. Yeah. So right now, as you can see, we're still doing that encounter manipulation. He's going to do the hard reset, burn off those first two encounters. He's going to walk for about... Uh, what, what did we determine? It was about like maybe 
40, like 30 to 40 steps before he gets the next two encounters. I'm not going to lie. I do not step count at all. I absolutely encounter him, but I don't step count. What I do is I listen to the music and then I, I know where the cutoffs are in the music in order to know when I should be like saving. I do it for both the overworld and the sea, and then I'm pretty much good to go. I don't really need to memorize the encounter table for dungeons unless I need like very, very specific like floor by floor encounter manipulation. So for the most part, um, the music is a really good cue. Um, And it's definitely something I would recommend for newer players. Yeah, Uh, once you get further into like the game and you kind of have an idea of what encounters you expect to see on certain floors then things like knowing the encounter table can be important let's say for instance those arsahags have frost you don't want to see arsahags do frost like a bunch on you seven times in a row because you don't have any ribbons you may want to try to encounter manipulate around uh encounters on this particular floor where arsahags and wissahags can exist Mm -hmm. exactly but i would say that that is like you that's quite you know that don't i wouldn't be thinking too too much about that because that requires both encounter manipulation knowledge as well as enemy formation knowledge which i know there's some very very strong vanilla players who are new to the randomizer and that might be something that you might consider but if this this is like your first look at final fantasy or your first look in 20 years uh i wouldn't worry too too much about that oh absolutely i'm just throwing out some nuance no, definitely. It's, and it's a really good point. We've seen like people map out the entire encounter table again, even though it's not the vanilla RNG table, um, just so that they can get through a really challenging dungeon. So it's something that does come up, but it's not probably the biggest time save you can focus on quite yet versus like overworld encounter manipulation, which is both simpler and will save you a bunch more time. Yeah. And uh, you'll notice here, like, certain encounters uh, Sir Lancelot's not interested in taking versus others he is. Uh, Gersharks and um, Big Eyes, he knew he could take down in maybe one to two rounds, plus they're worth so much more experience. Whereas the Sea Trolls and the Sea Snakes, not so much great for the experience, plus you may not be able to take it down in one round because Sea Snakes do have quite a bit of HP, even with the Lit Threes. Um, But now we're going to see our first Fiend battle here as uh, we're going to disrespect Kraken and keep our knight in the first slot here. Um, We're going to go on ahead and just go Brack Strats, like we mentioned before, about a 26% chance that Brack will land on Kraken. Not because Kraken is weak to poison, but because he doesn't resist poison and has pretty low end death, if I remember correctly. Kraken... Yeah, that, that's exactly correct. 26.9%, and yeah, that's exactly why it works. But Kraken here deserves to be disrespected because our fighter is beef, or our knight is super beefy with that all that armor. Kraken is punching him five hits, five damage, doing his best uh, level five black belt impression. Yeah, and then as you can see there, uh, third bra- or four, sorry, fourth Brack was the uh, charm as Kraken goes down to some Bracken strats, and we are done here. Gonna do the hard reset burn off those two encounters and then we're gonna go on ahead and have a chat with uh the kindly old king in the northwest castle uh, yeah. see uh, see uh, how he feels feel. first probably yeah ah yeah it's my bad i forgot we still had the ruby mm-hmm. yeah so we know there's gonna be at least a couple of fetch quests happening here unless this turns into either the cube or the rod then we know a big fetch quest is gonna happen um, so Guardian Mark is saying no point checking the chess. I was actually talking to Spellzap about this recently, who's uh, won our spring tournament, a very, very good player. And he kind of correctly pointed out that like, if they're really, really on the way, um, it can be worth checking. Because if you found a second ribbon there, things like that, like it can actually speed you up by checking a few extra boxes if they're super free. So, you know, yes, we're in go mode. Yes, we don't need to, like, there's no loose. We don't need to open those boxes. But that doesn't mean you should never open boxes. But one thing that we're really trying to, like, talk to Ducklings about is, like, why are you open boxes and like if you're taking any extra steps out of your way um you really should be thinking about like why am i doing this versus just like ooh box ooh box ooh box um those ones were all free that's critical because it's the bottom of an inside of a room those boxes didn't require any encounter causing steps and they're right there so if you got a second ribbon that would have been good so you know consider things like that just make sure you have a reason why you're doing things and as long as you're doing that you're doing great yeah I mean, he definitely didn't need to, but like mm-hmm. like Chat said, we know there's two ribbons still left in the pool. If he had picked up a ribbon there, it would have saved him an infinite amount of time versus what maybe the two seconds it took him to check those four boxes. So we've got our cube from Astos. We know at this point it's going to be TNT to herb to rod because those are the things that we have left. 
Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, this was kind of the required double dip of Dwarf Cave because we needed the adamant to get uh, the canoe. Um, Lonnie Star, like, like, for instance, if you're trying to find a key item and a chest and you found no key items anywhere. So yeah, so this particular flag set has no loose items. So we're guaranteed to not find the loose, the, the, the key item that we're looking for in a random chest. So he is just purely opening these for like the chance for a good item. Um, but in other flag sets, up. like the first week one, um, this was absolutely the case where we need to open those boxes to potentially find some key items. And yeah, I agree with that greatly. Uh, sorry, can you repeat that? I, I absolutely talked over you. <laughs> no, 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 it's fine. I was just saying that uh, that pro ring was a huge pickup that not only saves them the, I think, 20 grand that they were, or no, sorry, they were kind of cheap, the four grand that they were worth. But I mean, you know, pro ring plus three, big time pickup. So now that we've got the rod, we are definitely in go mode. Uh, now that we're kind of in the area, we may pick up any loose items before going on, like loose items and buy loose items. I mean, the things that he wants so that he doesn't have to go back into cities anymore. Like, you know, picking up the, you know, the power bonk, um, these spells that he was talking about earlier, the cure for the exit uh, out of here. We know that white shirts and um, power bonks were for sale and I think Provoca. Uh, white shirts, yeah, Provoca. Yeah, so he's going to probably want to go up there and hit those up uh, before finally just going full on uh, clearing places. But we are doing the proximity uh, carry kill here. So since we're right next to Volcano, we're going to go on ahead and hop in here. And uh, Volcano, another amazing dungeon. Um, every one of those damage tiles that he'll take here uh, does not move the encounter table along. And since we already kind of have an idea of what the encounter table looks like, I again see a situation where Sir Linkalot is probably only going to get two encounters, maybe three before taking on carry. Mm -hmm. And I like the decision here to do Volcano before Provoke as well, because not only is it like proximity, he also might get an extra couple thousand gold and in doing so be able to afford a little bit more. He doesn't really need the Power Bonk or the White Shirt to like get through here safely. So that's the only reason you don't route Vol uh, Volcano first if you feel like you really need whatever is in Provoke first. And those are the two encounters we talked about. We knew burning off to got the two back to back. And then at this point, again, I don't really expect him to get any more encounters before carry. And uh, I don't imagine box checks, but we'll see what Sir Link Elect decides to do. Uh, that box is completely free in terms of encounters because every single step he took was doesn't count as a encounter causing step. So you can check it just for the time loss it takes to walk up there and open the box. Yep, and then before taking on carry, I imagine he'll throw a couple of heal threes out, which is again, way quicker uh, than, you know, throwing out what, that would have been about 16 or 20 heal pots to get everybody up and running. Um, he's gonna go on ahead and go full on nuke and phage strats, which I like mm -hmm. May as well. A big old hit from that Masa plus seven, takes down carry. And we're already level 21. He's got to be feeling pretty good about his levels, especially since we still have Sky on the table, which, I mean, you know, we that that should get at least two two more levels, uh, depending on what he decides to take while he's in there. Yeah, for sure. So as Sir Lickalot goes and picks up um, the little bit of leftover spells and stuff for, like, his knight, for example, as well as the uh, equipment that he wanted to get, there's a question. If we're talking early game, what is usually the first train of thought? Well. I'll answer kind of very briefly here, but I definitely suggest you check out the playlist of these that's going to be on the Final Fantasy Randomizer YouTube so you can catch the beginning of this video or last week's, which kind of goes a lot more in detail. But basically, we're not locked to a randomized party setup here, so Sir Linkalot did select these four characters. Because of um, magic levels being capped so severely for the Red Mage, he decided to go without a Red Mage. And basically, the choice for melee character, which you want usually at least one of, was between the fighter and the thief. And he de decided to go with the thief because the thief is quite a, or sorry, the, the fighter, because the fighter is quite a bit safer because the thief does not have the HP growth that the fighter has. The damage is very comparable, but the HP growth is not. Yeah, so right now he's just kind of moving some stuff around so that he can get his white shirts where he wants his white shirts to be. Um, and then he's going to probably pick up a few more white shirts so he has that definite, um, you know, ability to get his evasion all the way up, especially once, you know, we get to the, the end of Topher here. Um, so I'm pretty happy with that gear. I think yeah. he's got to be pretty happy with his gear. Uh, Sir Linkalot, you got anything else to say about your gear or anything before we move on to these last couple dungeons? 
I mean, another ribbon wouldn't be terrible, but at the same time, I've got two wall casters, so chances are I'll just end up using wall on the fighter on my white wizard on turn one just to, I guess, have it. Mm -hmm. um, that way I don't, I mean, I've got the backup strat if something does happen to the fighter. It's like I've got a power bonk as well as like cure fours, things like that on my white wizard, so it's not a huge deal if something does happen. But yeah. we'll see. Yeah, the white shirt plus four, I mean, that's that's huge. Not only for the Invis 2, but, you know, I mean, it's uh, it's about as, it's about comparable to an Opal bracelet mm -hmm. uh, as far as its, um, you know, absorb is concerned. Um, and then at this point, I mean, if you wanted to hit up uh, Elfland on your way to Topher and grab those gold plus threes, you could, but, you know, at this point, are you taking the extra 10 seconds or 30 seconds to run into a city to pick up armor, or are you just trying to go, go, go? Yeah. Well, if I'm stopping an elf one, it's not for gold bracelets. Yeah. It, it's, I, I, it, it's for two more moss immunes. <laughs> 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 the, the, the gold bracelet improvement, see, the thing is, there's very diminishing returns, because against things that matter, like Kraken, your black belt, your black mages are getting one punch basically regardless. Like, the extra absorb's not going to make the difference for the most part, so. Hey, look, it's Thunder Frost Wolves, yay. Oh, you hey, got away. Uh, cool. Um, so, a couple questions in chat. Uh, Asking, hmm, will there be a Warmech encounter? Uh, that is a good question. If you want there to be a Warmech encounter, it is coming very quickly to the time. So get your uh, Mr. Destructoids out in chat. Call for our robot chicken friend. Um, and maybe we'll get to see a fight of one. Um, so yeah. Yeah, I'm hoping so. I think Warmech's not a bad thing here. The extra levels would be kind of nice. <laughs> and you can yeah, definitely yeah. kill it. Since I haven't been getting many encounters either. Something you'll note right away if you're a new player who started to encounter manipulate is that your levels are going to be a little bit lower than you're used to because you're skipping so many more encounters. Uh, you're just not getting the same levels. Um, so you do have to account for that at, at points. And that's by doing things like what Sir Linkalot did in uh, Ordeals, which was the play I really liked, where he just burned his spell charges to make sure that he could um, get a few extra levels there so that way he's not in such dire straits in other places. Yeah. Um, right now, Sir Link a lot checking one of the kind of the last greed checks that you, you, you can pretty much do in the game here, just because it's not really that far out of the way. And there's four free chests in here. Again, it's not hard, not a bad idea to try to find a second ribbon. I think he also did that because he just wanted more encounters. <laughs> like, I yeah. think he wanted more levels. So he just wanted a few more steps on that floor. Now, the only issue that I'm having here is that Sir Lancelot's clearly going the wrong way here. Everybody knows you go le uh, right oh, no. twice and up twice. Oh, so I'm no. not sure what, what this whole going left thing is. Um, I mean, we we all saw the Nintendo Power Guide, right? It's, it, it, it's it's right twice up twice. I, I, don't, I don't know what's happening here. And see, Rock Solid is is on is on uh, R R U U team mm -hmm. here. So memes aside, you can go any combination of like basically you want to go two diagonal. <laughs> so as long as you go some combination, <laughs> you will get to the exit. And here we go on the bridge. Uh, will we see a robot chicken friend? Uh, first, we have some nachos who are just exp. They're just food. Eat They're them, just... get that EXP. Yeah. So, so here's my excuse for going left and then down. I'm already holding left when I enter it, so I don't want to let go of mm. left. Mm. So I could go left and up or left and down. I'm not going right, though, because that means I have to move my fingers mm. more. Mm. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's good logic. Yeah. So as you can see, he's getting tons of encounters on the uh, Bridge of Destiny. And the Bridge of Destiny, of course, has a uh in, like we mentioned earlier that the overworld uh, and vanilla has 10 encounters per 256 steps um the bridge of destiny has 24 encounters mm. uh so it's 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 a little bit over uh about one you know 140 percent more uh right so we're it, you can see we're getting infinitely more encounters here but luckily uh not luckily i guess unfortunately we didn't get um any Warmax, so, you know, bad times. Yeah, so if you're not familiar, Warmax is a, a very scary enemy in the vanilla game uh, who only appears on the Bridge of Destiny, but he is worth the most experience of any enemy in the entire game. So 
it's definitely something that you can kill if you have the chance, but dying to him is a big risk because he does get shuffled, like their spells get shuffled into the Fiend refights and Chaos Pool, so he can get nukes, nuclears, all that jazz, and really put some hurting on your party. So if you're not prepared, it can be very dangerous. Yeah, he's definitely scary. He has all four nuclears in his pool, doesn't have any spells, so Annie has a high ambush rate in the vanilla game. So typically you'll hit him, he'll ambush you with either nuclear or he'll punch one of your guys out. And then second turn will either nuclear or punch more of your people out. Mm -hmm. Very scary. Um, but yep, Sir Lancelot using the nice combination of strategies. They're trying to put out some Brax as Tia does um, is weak to poison, which is Brax element. And also going with swings just in case Brax missed. In that case, Brax missed, but the swings got it done. So nice Tia med fight there. We have one fiend remaining Lich and then we will be able to enter the Temple of Fiends Revisited. So overall, a really nice run, good routing by Sir Lancelot here. Things have been going quite well for us, and nice usage of the shops to make sure you fully kit out this party. Yeah. Yeah, so with this particular flag set, you know, taking those notes, knowing, uh, you know, what you need, what's important in your shops, and uh, being able to route those shops back in once you have the money to pick up the things that you need, mm -hmm. and knowing what encounters to take. I mean, uh, I think there was a great use of spike tiles here. Uh, mm -hmm. Me personally, I would have probably gone along and just taken encounters along the way, but I've really appreciated a different take on it. You know, taking the spike tile and waterfall and taking that spike tile and ordeals just to get the extra money, especially the white D's because of how much gold they gave. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, yeah. Whole, the whole idea of taking those, it wasn't even so much I was worried about the money or the experience off of them. I just knew they were gold heavy encounters. And then, you know, when you find out that they have as low health as they do, it's like that's going to give me the money to go pick up the Masa and then I don't have to worry about end game weapons anymore. And I can basically just go into any dungeon I want. Yep. 100%. Yeah. So uh, as you can see here, we're not taking any encounters. No reason to. These guys aren't going to give us any sort of EXP that's going to even matter. And plus we're level 24, which is pretty good. So you'll see there's this blue thing on the screen. It's about to die. And then we're done. So what even happened? What was that? Mm -hmm. Level 24 is particularly important for this particular party comp because the Masa is one of the only weapons in the game that does not increase its hit breakpoints, which is when the fighter gets an extra swing with its weapon because it's already maxed out. Um, so the Masa, even no matter what the pluses are, will always get an extra hit on the fighter at level 24. So 24 is like the perfect spot for the fighter to be at in order to like go into the Temple of Fiends Revisited as he will get an extra sw swing, which will increase his damage by about 25%, uh, which is huge. Yeah. Uh, other weapons, their hit breakpoints do change. So if you've memorized, for example, that the Sun Sword and the Defense get extra hits at 29, while the Sun Sword plus three will generally, each plus generally equates to about one level difference. So Sun Sword plus three will probably get its extra hit at 26 instead of 29. So every other weapon adjusts, but the Masa, because it's already so good, does not. Uh, we can definitely share the flags here and. Um in in chat for sure uh but if you tune in tomorrow on our discord final fantasy randomizer discord that you have pulled up there um i will be posting our duckling seed tomorrow morning uh usually somewhere between 10 and 12 um uh, 10 a.m and noon eastern standard time and there goes jat throwing it out there unfortunately we got that exclamation mark which breaks the link yeah, so you have to do some copy pass strats, but that's okay. Yeah, so it looks like he is going to go on ahead and go for the safety strats with the Massa plus seven. Just go on ahead and pick a few of them up and then uh, grab a couple of gold bracelets here. Uh, but again, please join the randomizer if you're enjoying what you're seeing and this looks fun to you, which I mean, for me, it, it, it looks pretty awesome just to see the characters move by so quickly, having all the spells fixed, having all the spells randomized so you have like nuke at a good level as opposed to a useless level at level eight. And, um, you know, just overall quality of life fixes here. Please join the Discord. Uh, you know, I'm Gregly Puff. Uh, Jet's hanging out with me here. Uh, we're all around um, answering questions for any new player that wants to join and and uh, wants to start either speedrunning or playing the game casually. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. And like, um, 
there's tons of people helping out. Uh, something that I've been doing for new players is if you want to run your first seed on video or maybe your third or fourth seed, um, I've been doing some VOD reviews of some new player seeds as well to kind of get some you know personalized tips and share it with other ducklings at the same time. So definitely something I recommend uh, coming and joining. I've been here for you know a number of months now. We Sir Lincoln and I both took part of the last Duckling Derby. We're obviously still here and passionate enough about it to help out in the next one. So I think that's a testament to the community. So definitely encourage you to come uh, check it out. A couple notes of what Sir Lancelot's done here. One thing is that he did encounter Manipulate before going into the Temple of Fiends Revisited. So that's something that you could definitely do um, as well. Otherwise, pretty standard stuff here. Yeah, uh, we got wizards there uh, taking the place of the Phantoms. So, uh, you know, the first real boss in the game ends up being at the very end of the game. So, um, I, I guess, yeah, the only other thing I want to note is that, like, these flags, if you are like a newer player, but maybe you took part of week one and you want to improve, these flags can be quite fast and they really challenge you to say, like, what is my victory condition? How fast can I go? How many boxes can I skip? How many spell levels can I potentially skip? Um, so, definitely something to keep in mind is even though Sir Lancelot spent a bunch of extra time in, you know, chests and not sorry, not chests, but like spells and like literally waiting for us to explain things. He still entered the Temple of Feeds Revisited at one hour and 15 minutes or so. And that just goes to show A, Sir Linklot's a great runner, but B, that this is like a flag that you definitely can push your limits on a little bit. So I really encourage you to practice um, these a couple times and just see how much you can push it. Um, I did want to point out there, don't forget to equip your gear uh, when mm -hmm. you pick things up. You know, you go out of your way to grab some things. It, you know <laughs> but anyways uh question again about the tracker uh this particular tracker not sure i don't tend to use them uh but i'm but there's plenty of trackers that people do use uh, again join the discord ask the question about the tracker and people will uh, uh throw one out there for you because there's quite a few of them out there and um blink and you miss and let's do it down it's okay, I forgot to equip the mouses, but I equipped them for their purpose, which was complete disrespect of Lich, and not even using nukes <laughs> on him. He gets swings from mouses on Black Wizards. I'm not gonna lie, when I was practicing this, this happened a number of times, where I just, like, four person swung through Lich and carry, and, like, it worked totally fine, because Masa plus seven is ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, and then like, like Jat said, you know, because these flags are kind of fast, just because I post a duckling seed, yes, feel free to go run the seed that I post, submit your time, talk to your fellow ducklings about how the seed went and, and compare your times and strategies and whatnot. But also feel free to roll a different seed with the same flags. And then, you know, get used to the idea of the flags and, and just practice. And like he, like Jat said, figure out what your wind condition is going to be um, per flag. Mm -hmm. Yeah, going in, you can make so many mistakes that affect your time just by like not having played the flags before. So trying one out can like make a world of difference. And, you know, DVS saying run three or four, uh, depending on your timeline, you can run fewer. But I, I suggest at least one if you can at all afford it, um, as it, it really helps. OK, so going pure not quite pure offense here but pretty aggressive but is going for more of a buff strat and that makes sense because this knight is unlikely to get one punch by kraken and also going to do a ton of damage because of um, that masa being so powerful so going full offense uh, definitely recommended and also with this knight getting buffed up really nice also i really want to highlight the fact that he rearranged his party so that if someone gets punched, it's not his critical life caster or his primary damage to his knight. His black mages are expendable because he can just bring them back up, but those two characters are not. Yeah, so basically, yeah, moving that knight to the back row, then the person that's in the front slot there is going to get attacked 50% of the time. The person in the second slot is going to get 25% of the time. And then uh, the people in the two bottom slots, uh, slots three and four, uh, they also share that 25%, so 12.5% uh, per attack or character down on the bottom, which is why you'll see they'll move their primary damage dealer slash life caster into those back two slots because it's just, you know, they're, they're not supposed to get hit back there, but if you're certain people like myself, uh, you will get back road anyway. 
Yeah, but keeping those alive is, you know, really is the goal, or at least having as high of a chance. Uh, Burt Reynolds m mentioned that, you know, Final Fantasy randomizer is just, you know, you're trying to influence as many coin flips as you can, but they're coin flips nonetheless, but you can influence them, and that's critical. So that's what he's trying to do here, is just, like, influence the coin flips. So even though it can go wrong, it's instead of one and two that your knight gets swung at, it's one and eight instead. Yeah. So uh, we are making pretty short work of these Topher bosses because of the scaling, because of the muscle plus sevens. And we're already at chaos here, and he's just going to go on ahead, use a couple of heals to uh, heal up, probably move his people around, and um, and probably make short work of chaos here. We're going to see how this goes. I'm interested to see if white shirts are even going to be a thing or if we're just going to stick with buff strats here. And it looks like it's a lot of the same uh, fast wall temper coming out on that night and then a uh you know swing just to see what's going on here no we got power bonk so now we got the temper stacks going uh temper gives you 14 damage per cast and they do stack uh good thing we threw the wall out because stop is time elemental and will paralyze your character but luckily the wall came out and uh resisted that uh, lit 2 going to do a whole lot of nothing, and as you saw, that first Massa Swing was huge, and second Massa Swing does the deal. Uh, Chaos goes down, and uh, Sir Lancelot, really just phenomenal work on that particular seed. Yeah, really nice. Really, like, showing that defensive strats, when you have a knight who's swinging for 1,100 damage on turn 2, uh, you can, you know, do a little bit less uh, defensive strats, knowing you can just kill it so quick that Chaos isn't going to have a chance to do anything scary. Uh, also, his knight was very well armored, so like even if he did get punched, it was probably going to survive at least once. He had Cure 4 available, so all these things you know, determine whether or not you can go fast or not. But the biggest one, of course, being the scaling and your weapon quality. Um, so yeah, that was a great seed. Uh, GG's to Sir Link a lot. Thanks a lot for running it. Um, so kind of as we start to wrap things up here, maybe we'll get uh, Sir Link a lot to kind of provide any thoughts and any input he wanted to have, you know, anything that we were saying completely wrong or just things he wanted to point out about his run. Well, I know on Chaos, one of the reasons why it's like I didn't even worry about going like defensive with the white shirt is Chaos um, on turn one punched me and punched a black mage, which that black mage, I believe only had a silver plus two equipped and hit it for 90. So <laughs> And it was a single hit as well. So I'm like, I'm not even worried if he's only hitting one time, he can punch my knight for probably 10 damage at that point. I don't care. He's not mm -hmm. killing my knight. Um, let me just go all out offense. So it was like, you know, double temper, uh, swing with the white mage just because they have the Masa and we'll see what the knight does. And as soon as I saw 1100 damage, I'm like, yeah, wait on the mage because chances are he's, he's dead next round. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, really good point. And I did want to point out something I've been discussing a little bit too is also um, making coming in with a plan, coming in with a win condition, but then being willing to adjust. And that's definitely something that you saw here. Another critical adjustment that you might want to make once in a while is changing tempers for locks if you see that you're missing a lot of swings um, and other adjustments. But like come in with a plan, but don't be afraid to change it. And that's a really good adjustment that you made there, Sir Link, a lot. Uh, anything else? No, that, that's definitely one of the things, like, you want to make sure, like, when you're going into Topher, you have your win condition, but if at all possible, you want to have, like, a backup to that, because sometimes things just go wrong, and that's, like, if you're in a one-on-one -on -one race, chances are that's where you're going to lose the most time as a deep Topher white. Yep. Another backup that's, like, sometimes not thought of is something like a ruse casting... Um, white mage with um, mage staff and like lightning cast and things like that. So like nukes and fades are a good backup, but also your white mage, if they they need to survive, but everything else goes wrong, having a caster item on them can be like a lifesaver. Just being able to chip in for 50 damage a turn for a while. Um, yeah, that's awesome. Thanks a lot, Sir Lancelot. Uh, Gregly Puff, any kind of thoughts that you want to give before we kind of wrap things up here? Oh, he might be having, uh, he was having a little bit of mic issues oh. earlier. Oh, there we go. No, it's fine. I, I put my mic on mute for a second there because I was yeah. looking at something else. Um, but no, I mean, I think you basically said everything you needed to say. It's awesome having you here, helping me out with the, um, with the duckling stuff. I mean, it's been, it's been great. Uh, so many of the newer players that have joined over the last year have, uh, have really tried to step up and help out, uh, a lot of the newer players that are joining now, uh, we can't 
thank our newer players enough for showing up and and being interested in the game so yeah just join up on the discord uh if you have any questions ask them in the duckling pond or the new player duckling pond or whatever it's called or how to ffr and um anybody that's awake and around will answer your questions and give you any sort of help uh, as humanly possible. I know this game can be quite the undertaking. You know, it's a it's a big game. It's a lot going on. So, uh, you know, we're always here to help out and, and uh, make newer players feel welcome. So I appreciate everybody for joining us here on uh, RPG Limit Break and Sir Link a lot for playing the game and Jet for hanging out with me. Yeah, absolutely. So with that, we will wrap things up. If you liked what you saw and want to learn a little bit more, come join us next Sunday at 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to go see the next week Duckling reveal. Um, I believe it's going to have a few more black belts than this particular seed. So if you're interested in that, come take a look. We also have duck or weekly races starting this week up again, Monday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and Thursday at 10.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. These are open to all runners, whether you're brand new or like old and gnarled like us. So, you know, you want to have a chance to compete, come and join that. Finally, as we mentioned before, make sure you check out our Discord so you can get started. Um, yeah, and once again, thanks again to Greg Lee Puff, my co-com, Sir Link a lot for running, and Dark Moon for restreaming tonight, and our broadcast partner at RPG Limit Break. And with that, I just hope everyone has a fantastic night. Good luck this week on the Duckling Weekly, and I'll see you all in Duckling Spoilers. Have a good night, everyone. Bye-bye. Make sure you hit FinalFantasyRandomizer.com for the randomizer itself. You can find links to the Discord and the development Discord right there on the website, as well as being able to check out the randomizer and all the cool stuff going on with that. We'll be back next week, uh, same time, 10 o'clock in the evening, and we hope to see you guys then.